Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. The pendulum of reality swings yet again into my corner. And there is an element of disbelief. In a group of old souls, there is always this. They say it's too easy. Some will say it's too easy to fake. And so we say this to you before we begin this discussion. It's about love. That's what it's about. It always has been and it always will be. And it's not the love that you think. There is a force in the universe even your astronomers have recognized and seen, identified, and they call it intelligent design. Because the universe itself is biased. It's biased into creativeness. It's biased in life creation. It's biased in love. There is purpose for everything. Astronomers, science, physicists, they want to see complete and total neutrality within all things, and they don't find it. And that's one of the things we want to discuss, the power that is starting to become yours in the understanding of energies around you which you have never identified as energies that specifically are what we're going to call informational. This is one of the first multi-dimensional channelings of a series. Starting to explain to you in a better fashion concepts that have been misunderstood or not explained at all. In order to start you thinking about what you can do. And that is the purpose. It's a big distance between the nucleus and the electron haze. If you could go with me to the smallest of the small, you'd find an enormous amount of emptiness. Physicists will tell you that most of you are made of nothing. And it's only because they just don't see what's in the dark. And the multidimensional truth is this. Between that which is the nucleus of the atom and the electron haze, it's filled with information, energy, love, and intelligent design. Difficult to explain how this manifests itself to your reality, but that is indeed the subject. So we'll start slow and easy. There it is, my friends, a rose, imagine it. A beautiful rose, this one's red. And you don't like it. You don't like the thorns, perhaps. Maybe you don't even like the color, perhaps. And you say to yourself, I'd like it a lot better if it was a daisy. But it's a rose. Now, in single dimensional digit thinking, all law 3D, the scenario is this, it's too bad you've got a rose when you wanted a daisy. Because it'll always be a rose, you know. And if you could look at the seed that the rose grows from and re-germinates from, it'll always be a rose. Too bad about the rose, he might say. 
And so the consensus of thinking and the actions around it are this. It will always be a rose, therefore I will never be able to change it. Now consider for a moment a multi-dimensional scenario where the master gardener visits the seed. Imagine for a moment that the master gardener can tell that which is the seed to systemically alter the information of what it is. And so that the next time the cells start to divide, the thorns drop off <laughs> and the color changes. And maybe, even maybe, a daisy grows instead. And what would you call this? And the answer is a miracle. <laughs> And that is how you define things that look out of the purview of your dimensional reality. I want you to start looking at these things differently. I want you to start seeing information that is multidimensional as energy. A tremendous amount of what you just call energy is only information. It leads us to the next phase of this teaching. For now we give you a discovery on the planet that has been made that is being used. And the discovery is this that you can address the cells, that is to say, the DNA portion of the human body to change its informational structure. Not to belabor an issue, but you must remember what the scientists discovered about DNA. 5% of it is chemical, protein encoded gene producing engine. Ninety-five percent seems to do nothing. So what you have is this, a DNA structure, one DNA loop that has three billion chemicals in it and five percent is the engine of the biological race car called the human being. And 95% is the driver. It's a consciousness. It's energy. It's information. And it's huge. And if you could change the information in those DNA parts, what would you say to them? Let me give you an example of something that's already been done. Let us say you're born with a deformed heart. Here is a heart that is not operating properly. The valves don't fit. And let us say that that is who you are, a red rose with thorns. And so in your reality, you're going to die sooner. You will not operate well. You may be on drugs when you're older. And you'll always have a deformed heart. You might ask the obvious question. Since all of the organs rejuvenate many times over your life, why is it systemically that those stem cells are given information to continue rejuvenating a broken heart? Why does it stay deformed? And here's the answer. Because the information stays static. 
without something to change the energy of the information within the systemic system of the human body, it will always repeat what it has. The rose will always be the rose, and the thorns will always grow there. What if you could literally change the information in the 90% of your DNA? What if you could change not only the information systemically, but even subconsciously as to who you are and why you're here? You're starting to learn how. Addressing the information energetically in DNA so that the stem cells are given a pattern of perfectness instead of the deformity. And as the heart then starts to regenerate, as all organs do, slowly it becomes a functioning heart and the valves fit. And you think that's science fiction. I'm telling you, it's being done now. For on the planet, multidimensional inventions are starting to occur. There will be many more. Pushing the envelope of your believability and changing physics. You've seen this, and you don't even know you've seen it. I'll ask you some other questions that you haven't really thought about. We brought these up before, and now we can discuss them more fully. Why can a starfish grow back an arm and you cannot? Because the programming in your body, in your DNA, in the information, the race driver driving the car has been instructed that those kinds of things only are to be done in the womb. And the instructions are always that way. And they repeat every time a cell divides. There'll come a day when you can change the instructions and you'll be able to grow back a limb. All of the chemistry is there. It's not that hard. But the instructions say you can't. And so they don't grow back. Imagine the race car driver in a splendid machine that can, that can go for so long <clears throat> with instructions that he can only turn left. <laughs> hmm. That's what a race car driver does, you know. <laughs> what if you straighten out the racetrack and suddenly you got a left-hand only driver. Hmm? What happens to the driver when the racetrack straightens out and he doesn't know how to do anything but make left turns? You got to change the information that he has. And that is what is being done. When the spinal cord is severed, there is chemistry that races to the place of the severing. So it won't grow back. Did you know that? There is a hormonal proteinal structure that actually keeps it from growing back. How does that serve humanity? Well, it doesn't. Nerves are designed to grow back. And they don't. Did you know they even have addresses, color codes, they can find each other in the dark and grow back? And they don't. Because built in to the race driver's information is not to grow back a spinal cord severing. There'll come a day when you can reprogram the systemicness Stem cells exist everywhere in the human body, alive and well. They are what pattern 
what happens. Chemically, they are responsible for a human that is predisposed to disease. And that predisposition will be then carried to the child. And the imprint and the energy and the information of the 90% will continue and continue and continue unless it's reprogrammed. Unless the information is given to it to become different. It's not chemical. It's energy. It is multi-dimensional energy. New technology to reprogram pieces and parts of the body. Do you know what this means? There are women in the room who respond to this, who carry a gene that their ancestors carried and that they carry and that their children will carry on predispositions to certain kinds of weaknesses. And when you can rewrite your genetic print, none who follow will have it either. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Your children and your children's children will only have the reprogramming. They will not have the original information. Energy is like that. Informational energy is like that. And there's a lot of it on the planet. There are systems on the planet that have been misunderstood for a long time. Let me give you a couple. This is controversial. You may not agree. You may not like it. But I'm going to give it to you anyway. Humans love things that go bump in the night. <laughs> they love to be frightened. They love to be scared. They love movies that scare them. And they love haunted places. Have you seen the upsurge in the interest of haunted places? Now let me tell you what they are and why they work the way they do. And now we get into the power of the information of the Akash. Human consciousness carries an imprint which affects the planet. And we have told you this from the beginning, 21 years of it. Human consciousness is what is going to change the planet. Human consciousness is information. It is information that you develop based upon what you think. And it's powerful. Human consciousness actually goes into what we have called the crystalline grid of the planet, which is a multi-dimensional grid. You can't see it. It holds energy. It holds information. When the planet is measured for vibration, it is the crystalline grid that is measured. And the crystalline grid only has on it what humans have put there an interdimensional record of thought, of lifetimes, of happenings. And here's what I'm going to tell you. In certain conditions, in certain ways, a human life or an interaction of multi-lives together in a scenario that is profound for whatever reason of its profundity will create an imprint in a place it's information and energy that will replay itself over and over and over like a recording tape in 3D. It's a haunted house. Did you know that? And here is some of the things, the attributes that we may not prove it to your psyche, but we'll give you something to think about. Did you notice? that in a haunting, you have a scenario which repeats. The man comes down the stairs. The man goes up the stairs. The woman in the kitchen moves from the left to the right, sits in a chair, rocks for a while, moves away. 
If it involved dramatic things such as murder, the man comes down the stairs with the axe. <laughs> over and over and over and over. It's a good movie, isn't it? And that's all it is. Why does it feel the way it feels, Cryon? Because it is a result of human consciousness imprint, and you've got one too. And when you're there interfacing with it, it gives you chills, because it's real. Now science has gotten involved, as they should, and they're noticing something. The imprint, the haunting, carries scientific attributes, and they're all multidimensional. Guess what changes? Magnetics, gravitation, light, and even time. Because what it is, is a multi-dimensional event imprinted onto a place on the planet that plays over and plays over and plays over. Can you capture it on tape? Uh-huh. Because it knows it's being observed. Because it's part of an imprint that is multi-dimensional in a quantum sense, it knows. I can't explain that to you. You assign knowing to sentiency, that is to say, that which is intelligent in a human being. And it isn't either of those. It's a knowing that is quantum. It knows when a human being can be frightened. And it frightens it. Oh, I have more to tell you. Oh, there are things that, that you wouldn't believe that you can do. How would you like to get rid of that? Let's say it's in your house. Now, this may be very inappropriate, but I'll give you the answer. <laughs> You're going to have to present an energy that is stronger than the imprint of the haunting. You cannot order it away. You already knew that, didn't you? No amount of huffing and puffing or calling upon God will make it different. The imprint was created by magnificent beings, sometimes seeming to do ordinary things. There's a reason for that as well. You don't know who they were. You don't know the old souls involved. You don't know who it is, really. You've got to present an energy that is stronger than the haunting. Now, what could that be? As inappropriate as it is, I will tell you. Why don't you make love in that room? <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> because that's stronger. Anyone who's been in love in the room there's some secrets here that I know, beautiful ones that I know, knows the power and the energy of humans coming together in intimacy. And the angels sing, and you create a third energy which is more powerful than the two of you. And you know it, it it's sacred, it's beautiful, and it's stronger than the haunting. Maybe you didn't want to hear that today. Well, what about other things? What about like demon possession and all these? And I will tell you this, it's different than you think. Because there are no demons. Humanity can conjure up the most evil of the most evil. And it can do it all by itself. And you knew that too, didn't you? Because you're powerful. The pieces in God, in you, even in your mythology, are responsible for the devil himself. A fallen angel, how can that even be? It is a metaphor of what a human can do on the earth with the energy that they have. 
Things are not always what they seem. What about talking to the dead? And how would that work, Crian? How could you talk to famous people when in the scheme of soul incarnation they've already come back as others? Now if they've already left, how can you talk to them? And the answer is this, they haven't left. Oh, the part that you think is the human left, but the imprint of them and their entire life and everything they knew, their consciousness, their wisdom, their knowledge, goes right into the crystalline grid. We've talked about this before. Can you contact famous people and get information? Yes. Will it be accurate? Of course. Because you're talking to the source. The imprint remains. You mean you're not actually talking to them? You're talking to the imprint? Let me give you something to think about. I'm going to ask a question right now. It's going to be a rhetorical one. Who are you? I have old souls in front of me. There's a woman in the room who won't wear red. And you know who you are. I'll tell you why, because it got you killed. <laughs> because that was the color of the plume on your helmet, warrior. Because you were the captain and they knew if they would take you out, your whole regiment would be in disarray and that's what happened. Not only kill you, kill everyone around you, you'll never wear red. You just don't like the color, it's just not for you. You shun it, don't you? Old soul, who are you? Who are you? Are you the warrior who got killed? Are you the woman who won't wear red? Are you the mother? Who are you? It is a rhetorical question because in my reality, you are a piece of God. And so when you go to that place where you wish to conjure up one who has lived before and ask them questions, who are you talking to? Are you talking to the Yerkosh? of a soul? Are you talking to that which is alive or dead? I will tell you none of those things are accurate because you don't really know. It's even more magnificent than that. Can you ask Aunt Martha where the treasure was buried? <laughs> yes! And she'll know because you're talking to the Aunt Martha imprint. And she'll know. Now if you ask Aunt Martha how are things on the other side She'll say, beautiful. What's it like over there? Lovely. Now give me some specifics. I love you. <laughs> she doesn't know. Aunt Martha knows what Aunt Martha knows. You think of it in singularity and it's not. It's powerful. It's real. And it's there to be accessed. It's multidimensional, and those with gifts can access the wisdom of the ancients. Go back and ask them what they knew. Go back and ask them how it felt. Go back and ask them where the treasure is buried. You're going to see some of this. And those in, in the places of magnificence on this planet, wearing the costumes of spirituality and the heads of state and religion will call it evil and will call it a cult not understanding that you are moving into a multi-dimensional state appropriate accurate true usable correct helpful all of those things does that make sense to you Let me give you a concept, and this will be the last one. I've saved the complicated one for last. <laughs> That's my favorite one. 
We haven't done this before, my partner, so get it right. <laughs> I want to show you how time works. And I can't. Because the reality of the complexities of multidimensionality preclude the human being's ability to understand it. It's simply not teachable. So I will metaphorize it and give you it in its simplest form, which is only a fraction of its reality. Time. We mentioned today that it is a singularity for you. There's only one of them. There's no multiple times. There's only one. And you're on one, one track on the planet. You're all on the same track. That is a singularity. It only goes one speed. It always, always has for your life. It doesn't move. The truth of it is it, it moves all the time. <clears throat> Another truth you don't understand is that each of you can step off the track and create a faster or slower one. You don't know that either. How do we explain this? So let me singularize it and pretend you're all on the same track for a moment. That's what you think anyway. That's easy. And I want you to build a track, a train track, which is time, I want you to put an engine upon it which goes in one direction very slowly and that's you and your life. I want you to make the train track, however, go all the way around the earth. Now to your perception, because you can only see to the horizon, the train track goes straight. The truth of the matter, it goes all the way around the earth and you're looking at it behind you. Create that kind of time for a moment. Now that puts time in a circle. Now that is confusing because it's a conundrum for you. In three dimensions, you cannot put time in a circle. It is in a circle. Because it's in a circle, however, take a look at some of the attributes that are confusing to you. Let us say your lifetime takes about 30 meters. <laughs> Not very long on this track that goes around the earth, is it? So you never have to really worry about meeting your past, do you? But let's pretend for a moment you could. What would happen if you drove that engine around the earth? Eventually, you would be running over the energy of what used to be, wouldn't you? In the same way of thinking, if you went around the earth several times, eventually you might be also running over what might become. Suddenly you have an attribute of time you haven't thought about. If it's in a circle, it means the future affects the present. And you think the future hasn't happened yet. It hasn't in 3D, it has in a quantum sense. Now I'm giving you information right now and I'm giving it to you this way because there are scientists looking at it in that way. Is it possible that the future could give you energy and information now? Think of this train track for a moment and let's get more complicated. It's got layers now. Every time the train goes around it, which is a human life, things change. What if it was humanity in that engine? Now you have the past, present, and the future of everything that's ever happened on one train track in a circle. Now you have a situation where you could stop the train, dig down in the track, and maybe if you had the ability, pick up something that either hasn't happened yet or happened before. I didn't expect you to understand it. Only listen to it. Because that's what's happening. Let's complicate it. Let's say this track has to go up some hills and down some valleys. 
and the hills and the valleys are always the same. If you were smart enough and had a system that understood this time, you could create bumps where it might be difficult or easy and actually put them on a map. You might even call them time fractals. <laughs> and you might be right. And every time you hit that place in time, whether it was in the future or the past, you got a hill or a valley. And I want to tell you what's happening at this moment, dear human being. I just gave you the simplest way I can give you the attributes of multidimensionality when it comes to time. You are visiting potentials that in your mind have not happened, but in a quantum sense have. You are receiving a vibrational increase so that you can look at the track of time and select where you want to go. You are looking at the potentials of the quantumness of vibrational shift and creating a culture that is going to go beyond what you think it could go because it's going to fly in the face of all prophecy. Because prophecy is based on one track that does one thing over and over in 3D. And as soon as you start to become multidimensional, information becomes energy. And in that track of time is information of the potentials. Okay, I'll tell you, nobody ask. <laughs> Except the ones who are asking. <laughs> it would seem like I've just turned a page. Because there's someone in here who wants to know what a crop circle is. And so I'll tell you, it's a good thing you ask. It's an energy stamp from the future. How about that? Now you don't know anything more than you did before. <laughs> Not a future that you went through. A future that has such a grand potential in a quantum state that is one with everything. You've already lived it. You're in an entangled state with that which you think has not happened, but which has happened so grandly, you already have peace on earth. And 21 years ago, I showed it to my partner so grandly. He can't deny it. It's his reality. And there are things in the room you can't deny because there are realities of you putting lives together, healing bodies that you've already done. That's how grand it is. You're in an entangled state with a reality that's outside of your dimensional perception. Hard to teach, hard to understand, but easy to feel. easy to feel. Imagine the solution is upon you. Imagine those things which you're planning already completed. Imagine yourself looking backwards and saying, now that wasn't too hard, was it? Imagine the most perplexing things you've brought to the table today over with. Now, how do you feel about it? And human being, if you can take a breath of release and look at it like I can, you are becoming quantum and you've just created it. Congratulations. Now go from this place in your three-dimensional way and walk through the steps that you've already done. And that's my message. Information is energy in a multi-dimensional state. All things are possible.
You come here to listen to a thing like this. Old soul. You wouldn't have missed this. And I'm not talking about this meeting. I'm talking about this life. <laughs> How many times have you lived waiting for this? What do you think the wisdom factor is in your Akashic record? If you've lived and lived and lived and lived and lived, how about that track of time? How many layers does it have for you? What about going in, drilling down, and picking up the wisdom of your ancients? Because many of you are your own ancestors. It's about time you started seeing it in that way. My partner says, leave differently than you came. He got that from me. <laughs> Do it. Do it. And so it is.